All right, so we started the day actually doing pretty well. Good gap to the upside, good potential for runaway gap, looking like, you know, we might have seen the worst of this latest bout of volatility uh, without really a pullback on the S&P or the NASDAQ. Then we started to fill in the gaps. Like, okay, well, maybe, like, you know, it's not a runaway gap, um, but at least it's not still not really bad. We're still holding some pretty good support for the S&P and the NASDAQ. So it's looking like everything's still going to be fine, but then... The last, I mean, it's like after all, I mean, we just like ate so much at Thanksgiving and we had so much pie afterwards and candy. The last 15, 30 minutes of trading, we really kind of let it all out. All of this high valuation overindulgence out and things kind of really hit the fan. So I'm going to break, I'm going to break down today the technical patterns that that produced and why that, you know, what that suggests in terms of what kind of what this bout of volatility will ultimately turn into and whether this is it or or how much longer and where it could go and and why and some some previous uh, instances of of this type of decline and how long they took and how far they dropped and uh, and all those so we're gonna, that's kind of my breakdown for today we're going to talk about from a asset class and sector rotation standpoint what's going on and then our trade idea is a bearish trade uh, not surprisingly so and uh, we'll give you an example of how we can do a bearish trade in this type of environment. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Today is Wednesday, December the 1st, 2021. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. All right, so uh, really quickly, I know that our Black Friday sale is, is over with. Um, but considering today's volatility and, and a lot of people probably wondering, questioning uh, what they can do, especially if this turns into something more... Uh, we're going to keep our um, that coupon code working for another day uh, until the until uh, later tonight. Um, so if you if you still want to check out our premium services with that 20% discount, you know, works out to like just over three dollars a day, a market day. So it's like a basically a cup of coffee, um, and you get all of this uh, in addition uh, in your premium. So 20% off of that full price. Again, if you go to pricing and hit premium, that takes you to this page. And you can sign up. You can see we've been getting a lot of signups because people have been getting started on their premium subscription. Uh, you can do six months, same as cash, with no interest uh, through PayPal credit. So that's, again, subject to their approval. And that's the process to do that. Uh, just make sure you check the PayPal account when you pay there. Uh, and then you hit this box uh, down here at the bottom to sign in uh, before you sign in and hit subscribe. Uh, and uh, we look forward to uh, having you join our community in this potentially turbulent time. All right, well, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500 uh, with the market forecast indicator. You can see the breakdown. Look at the breakdown we got here. So we were holding up most of the day today at that 38% Fibonacci level on of this bullish uh, intermediate move on the S&P 500. Uh, we have broken down now. I mean, this is, I mean, look at the near-term line getting below the fifth percentile because right at the low momentum line down to extreme lows. This is, this is very, very bearish short-term sentiment. Now, again, like... Are we going to like fall? Th you know, are we going to have another COVID drop? Prob most likely not. I would venture to guess probably a 99% probability not. Are we going to have a 50% drop? You know, like financial crisis? Uh, no. Like we're probably this is probably not starting a bear market here. Highly doubt that. So whenever I put in the context of very bearish short-term sentiment, that's what I'm talking about. It's a very bearish short-term sentiment, right? So it's very likely to lead to an intermediate decline. We talked about this kind of death cross. I tweeted about this death cross yesterday with the intermediate line falling below market sentiment. Well, you can see now it's well below market sentiment. And, and now it's actually out of bullish territory. And it's not bearish yet, though. It's not down below in, into the pink territory yet. Uh, the NASDAQ... It's just barely dipping below the 30-day moving average for the first time. It's actually sitting on its 38% retracement. So, again, kind of a little grain of salt. It is below. It, it did close below even that low point there. So, you know, the last two near-term lows the NASDAQ has had, we've now closed below both of them um, after getting a pretty bearish near-term peak um, that we didn't have until today, right? Because that near-term peak it peaked yesterday in bullish territory now back down and with another extreme low point on the um, momentum line. The first one was a signal that we were going to come out of uh, the reversal zone, and now another one here, a pretty good signal, will probably come out and with the with the death cross of the intermediate line below market sentiment. You're probably, or bearish crossover, I guess would be a better way of saying it, um, uh, down to the down to the bottom. So, 
So, you know, really bearish, at least at least uh, more bearish than it had been, right? We had been kind of flirting with the 23% retracement level, but man, the damage is on the Russell 2000. Like, we are now below the low point that started the last intermediate run, right? So, uh, very, and we got an oversold cluster. Uh, we're 8% below the 30-day moving average. Uh, in fact, if you look here, we looked at this in our class today, um, we are um, 3% below, well, now we're, now we're five percent below the 200-day moving average. Uh, so let me just show you here, um, you know, again some context of, you know, how often we get five percent below the 200-day moving average on the Russell 2000. So if you can see, if I zoom in, uh, you can see, of course, uh, the COVID low. Uh, we were kind of sitting at five percent right there before things really hit the fan. Uh, and then, of course, not, a couple of times kind of hitting some lows there in 2019, but never really breaking. Uh, we did in, um, in the, uh, the fourth quarter of 2018. You can see we really broke down. We didn't in the first quarter of 2018. And then before that, uh, you had to go out to that 2015-16 level where things you know, we were in a bear market there uh, for the Russell 2000. Briefly and during the Ebola scare and the and when tapering ended uh, in uh, 2014 and then you uh, you can see there's 2012 that prompted uh, QE3 that's when QE3 started uh, we got about five percent below and then of course um, the the 2011 I have to go man I have to go more than ten years now to get to 2011 it's crazy uh, my youngest was born in January 2012 and that's how time just marches on huh so here is that 2011 time frame and things you know we stay we didn't we didn't extend lower but man did we uh, stay down for quite a while there and that was during the credit crisis and of course this prompted qe2 uh the bearishness of 2010 and then of course there's your financial crisis and i highly doubt we'll get that again but still it's a pretty significant drop like there's some these these other instances i showed you were all pretty significant we, they weren't just like little intermediate dips more than likely that market sentiment line is going to drop into bearish territory it didn't quite do it here uh you know it was so bullish coming off that COVID low point it never did really drop below 40 uh during this really long uh consolidation and now very good chance that we'll probably do that and you know for that matter pretty probably pretty decent chance uh, we'll we'll do it on the s p 500 too the s p 500 is not here we move that one is not um dipping down uh into bear it's not below its 200 day moving average yet but you can see it's getting closer uh, than it has been uh, if i go back to this the regular market forecast chart you know again you can see to see the bearishness i wanted to show you the dow too <clears throat> it looks very similar to uh, the russell so again remember a retracement starts when you break the 23 percent line a retracement ends when you either get back above the 23 percent line or you break the 78 percent line which is the case now so we are no longer just retracing on the Dow, just like we, we are no longer just retracing on the Russell. We are now in a bearish move. Like we're well below the, it's gonna be a long time before we get back above, well, you know, take that with a grain of salt. It's gonna take a significant move uh, to get back above the 30 day moving average and turn it dark green again. Um, so that's, you know, that's where we're at right now with the Dow Jones industrial average and the Russell 2000. Not quite below the 100% mark, um, but you can see kind of on its way. Uh, of course, when you look at the long-term chart, uh, when you look for, there's three things we look for here for an intermediate decline. Uh, one is a red arrow, which we got. Two is a falling PPO, which we got. Three is a negative differential, which is a red arrow, a red candle. And that's what we got. And that's the biggest in a bearish, that, that's a bigger candle so far, they, the week's not over, that we had in any of these intermediate declines, right? And it, it goes all the way back to this one. So it's a pretty decent bearish candle. Of course, the Russell 2000's bearish candle is really significant. Again, you know that's that's the biggest candle we had since the COVID drop. And then you have to go back out. Um, you can see here if I follow my cursor all along, 2018 uh, we had a pretty bearish candle there. 2016 and 15 we got bearish candles about this size. So this is a very significant event. Um, very significant event. It's not just, a, like I said, a, a, any typical intermediate decline according to what we're seeing here uh, across some of these indicators. Here's your three green arrow charts. Remember, the, these had turned pink and never did clear up. 
the s p did for a day but now it's pink the russell the nasdaq's pink pretty good chance that it's going to stay pink because the s p is staying pink these two are going to stay pink for a while you know that that's that's what this chart that's what this chart tells you when you're in intermediate decline um intermediate decline again is when the green line gets below into the pink territory and then you're bearish for a month to three months uh of course if the orange line gets in the pink territory then you're bearish for three to six months right and again that doesn't necessarily mean that you're always uh dropping if you look at the last intermediate decline or market sentiment decline that we had of course the covid low point but look at during the covid drop um that the whole time we had the covid drop look at all those great big updates we had um and then the last market sentiment regular market sentiment decline was that fourth quarter of 2018 look at all those updates we had so when you're in a market sentiment decline that lasts a few months you're going to have a lot of updates too so it's not this straight three months to six months of declines or an intermediate level it's not just a straight one to three months like here's your last um, we had an intermediate decline right there in September, August, September. Look at all those bullish moves that we had. Uh, so even intermediate declines are not straight down for a whole month, right? You got lots of updates in there. So I expect that we'll get lots of down uh, updates uh, eventually too. Um, but you know we're in that mode now. If you look at the two line version, you know we broke the 50 uh, by a little bit. Now we'll see if we hold this. You know, it's one thing to break it, you know, like we did there pre-September expiration, um, and we didn't bounce, right? And that's why we, you know, had our intermediate decline. So we need to see if we bounce off of this or not. Of course, the IWM is a much different story. We not only are broke, broken significantly below the 200-day moving average to the point where, when you know, you would not expect we'll just bounce right back up. But if we do, you've got some very heavy resistance because you've got the 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 point of control sitting right on top of you uh, lot in fact 70 percent of this year's volume is sitting above us that's a lot of resistance uh, and there's really no volume below us even on a two-year basis um, you know there's not very much volume below uh, especially if you break that 210 level 209 so important level but regardless we are in bearish divergence mode uh, on IWM we are definitely in bearish divergence mode now on SPY we are flirting with it the last couple of days. We are definitely in that mode now. And that's, again, you can see the difference when you're in a bearish convert, a bullish convergence mode, and then you switch to a bearish divergence mode. You can see when we break the 17, we don't, and we hold it. That's when things really change, right? All, all this time, we were just above the 17, and we were grinding higher above the, the eight day. But once we broke the 17, we went from bullish convergence to bearish divergence mode really rapidly. Uh, there's your cues. Um, of course, it's also dropping below the 8. So it gapped up above the 8. We dropped below the 8, 17, and 30 all during today's rally. And again, closing below all these lows. Now, they, they see the, the Qs have the 50 still below it. The 200 day is well below it. So, And you've got a lot of volume below where we're at right now, including the one-year point of control. So you've got a lot of support uh, that the Qs have that the Russell doesn't. So it doesn't mean that it won't go down. It just means that... Um, the Russell 2000 will, you know, if there is a period of extended volatility right now, the Russell 2000 is going to be the one that take it on the chin way more than, than some of these others, um, than these large cap tech names. Well, already we've seen that, right? In fact, if you take a look at this um, relative strength chart here, uh, over here, um, you can see if I update it uh, for today, I mean, we're spi look how much we're spiking. Uh, we're really going parabolic. Uh, the MACD has gone up. A, a lot that C, the CCI is up at really high levels. The DMI has gone parabolic. The RSI is at really extremely bullish levels. Um, we've really spiked. Uh, this is not a sign, this is not a uh, typical move to say the least. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, some of these other oscillators here. Um, there's your DMI big break. You know above 30, below 20. There's your bearish break. We were bullish. There's your bearish break on SPY. Again, that we already had gotten on IWM, right? IWM, we were already above 30 and below, and now we're really going extreme uh, with the oversold cluster there. And the ADX is just jumping above 25. Uh, if you take a look at like the D, uh, the RSI and the CCI, breaking below, well below minus 150, getting below minus 200 again, breaking below 40, uh, which we hadn't been uh, on SPX. So the Russell 2000, of course, Look at that RSI. That is insane how low that is. 
and again well below 150 I mean these oscillators are definitely trending lower your SPY now is no longer strongly bullish and we are below the blue line and staying there still above the cloud though so you see the difference in margin of safety uh, with SPY QQQ and then look at IWM a dramatic difference right we are below the cloud now in fact the green line is pretty close itself to getting into the cloud uh, we are at uh, minus 4.3, so almost minus 5, and, and already above 80. So we're almost to a mature bearish trend already on IWM. That's how fast things have really hit the fan uh, for the small cap index. And that's why we've really focused on it. Like, especially in our, um, you know, we've been hedging the small cap index for a long time because it's been this way for a long time. And what made it worse was the fake out. Remember, fake outs are way more bearish than just resistance holding. Look at all these times resistance held, and we did drop, and we dropped to the 200 day, and we kind of held, and we bounced, but this time, you didn't, the resistance didn't hold, it broke through, it brought in a lot of weak hands, expect, you know, waiting, waiting, waiting on that breakout, and now you've got the weakest hands possible, and you see what happens after a fake out. Now we finally get to more bearish technical levels than we ever had during all these other times when resistance actually did hold. Now we have a, a, a mature bearish trend. We never did get to that level. Here we got to minus 3.6, and here we got to 78. So we never did get to those mature levels. We get the closest was right there, but now after the fake out, that's when things hit the fan. Uh, if you look at the, um, the uh, trading range today, I talked about like right there, I tweeted out, okay, here we go. Do we fill or do we not fill, right? Saying like that David Letterman, will it float, right? He had that, that comedy bit, will it float? Well, this was like, will it fill? And yes, it did. And once it filled, we knew no longer a runaway gap. And then of course, you know, once you fill, it's basically like a dead cat bounce. We broke down. As long as we held that low point, everything would have been okay. But at the very close, we didn't. And that's what made it worse. And you saw that on SBY. You saw that on the queues. We finally broke below Friday's low at the close. We had been holding really well. And of course, IWM um, breaking, you know, it had got to a higher high and was still holding very well that gap. But then once it broke through, then it just gave it up. And then closing below yesterday's low, again, very bearish. Uh, so you, now we have the Arun indicator, a bearish crossover everywhere. We already had it on IWM. Um, we already had it on the diamonds right now we now we have it on SPY and now we have it on the Q's right those are bearish crossovers that will take some time uh, to rectify right there you can see when it started there it took some time uh, to rectify and that was just an intermediate decline if I were to show you again the last uh, normal market sentiment decline that was of course your COVID low but this was your last normal market sentiment decline sorry let me uh change this there we go so there was your last market sentiment decline in the fourth quarter of 2018 things hit the fan you can see they stayed bearish for quite a while before they we got that bullish crossover there right you got these kind of little mini bullish crossovers but neither one of those got to 100 like this one did and that's when you know we were good but you know we hit the fan there we're hitting the fan right now you know it could be a, it could be an intermediate pullback but it seems more likely that it's going to be a little bit more of that. This, you know, we'll see how things respond, especially tomorrow. Our volatility index really jumped. Well, let's take a look at the range really quick. Uh, the range and um, the the uh, tr the trading range today was 14 points. Uh, the average is only five. The vol volume 130 uh, million shares. So let's put those numbers in context. 130 million shares is well off the top of this of this 52 week range. 14 points well off. I mean, these are this is a very bearish candle, and we are back up to one and a quarter percent. Remember, typically intermediate declines don't stop until we get to two percent. That's what made this last one kind of a fake out, right? Because uh, it didn't get to two percent, and 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 it ended, and that's not normal. See, normally you get to about two percent before the intermediate decline ends. So that was kind of a little bit of a fake out intermediate decline that. I think this one is going to get to 2%, right? Which means that, you know, like 2% of 450 is nine points. That means the you would expect that this to get up to around eight to nine points um, by the time the average, by the time we, we get done with this thing. Again, last time we had, you know, your typical market sentiment decline, which fourth quarter of 2018 right there, um, you know, it got up to 2% and eventually got a little bit higher, about to, you know, above 2% to 2.5% by the time it was all said and done. 
um, you know that's kind of what you're seeing and, and volatility index is another sign and that you know we're above 100% uh, we were above 100% briefly intraday but this is the first time we've closed this is the first time we've closed above 100% all year like the last time we did was January the 27th we came right back down immediately um, before that uh, you can see uh, before that, you can see uh, way over here, uh, we at the, the Halloween low there on 2020, and then of course your COVID low point. Uh, again, there is your fourth quarter 2018. We got all the way up to 115%. That's the key level. If we get up that high, you know, anywhere here is fine. But once you get up to 115, and you have a good probability that we're going to be in a market sentiment decline, which just means that we'll stay down longer. Um, I mentioned to you before on the zigzag. I tweeted this out too, that we've gone um, without a 10% move from close to close, which is what this indicator looks like. We've gone 100%, 110% rally. We're still only down 4% uh, off of that close after a 110% rally. A 10% drop is right down to about 42.34. That's a 10% drop. That's still not even 23% retracement. This would be a 20% drop down to the a typical 30, which is what we got in 2018 right especially that one right there that first one and uh, market sentiment decline so so you know it'd be very typical that we're going to be in this area if if this continues right um, we'll see how we react to today's close uh, tomorrow but if this continues that's the kind of areas of what you'd be watching for and and again it's not that bad of a problem right to get a 10 percent drop um, you can see what happens after you get 10% drops, right? You rally 13%, you rally 44%, you rally, you know, here we went 93% and got about a 15 or 13%, uh, maybe about 15 from that peak to down there, uh, 15, 16. And then you got a 57% rally off of that. So, you know, here you got a 19% drop and then in 2011, and we rallied 93% uh, off of that. So, you know, falling 10% is not the end of the world. Falling 20% is not the end of the world. In fact, it actually would lead to like, you know, a great buying opportunity coming off of what we've already had, a great buying opportunity that came off a 34% drop. So it's not going to be the end of the world at all if that something like that were to happen. Uh, I did mention the VIX. One more thing really quickly. Uh, I wanted to bring this up on the volatility index, right? Uh, here, so let me bring up VIX here, but then let me get rid of the uh, MACD and the stochastic indicators and bring up how far up above the 200 day moving average we are right now. Simple, oops, not 2000, it's 200. You know, 65 percent. You know, so we've eclipsed the 50 percent mark. You know that, and I've shown, I tweeted this out too, and I think I've brought it up in the previous market outlook. When we get this far up above, there's the fourth quarter of 2018. You know, it's a pretty good chance we're heading towards a market sentiment decline. Again, market sentiment decline. Let me just remind you: is when the orange line gets down. Um, you know that. You know, again, the the idea of how far. You know, you'd start looking into this area here as to how far we could drop, which again would be about 10 to 20 percent. Not a big problem at all. You can see there's lots of 10 to 20 percent uh, in there, so it wouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, the time frame of it, again, that it took three months in the fourth quarter of 2018. It took three months in the first quarter of 2000, first quarter and the fourth quarter of 2018. It took, you know, what from the beginning of February, you know, t should we were bullish within a couple of months back to being bullish even if we weren't quite back up to those highs so you know it was only a, a month or two there because that was so dramatic um, it took a few months over here in 15 and 16 before we finally got going again uh, about probably more like four or five six months in that range so that's kind of the three to six month time frame of lots of ups and downs right lots of ups and downs um, here let's see here uh, the There's lots of ups and downs. There's the first quarter of 2018. Look at all the green bars. Look at the, all the green bars in the fourth quarter of 2018. Look at all the green bars during the COVID drop. Look at all the green bars during that 15, 16 range. So there's lots of bullish days. In fact, they're hugely bullish days. 
uh, during those in these market sentiment declines. We just have more and bigger bearish days than normal, and that's what produces the low. So you know w the three to six month time frame means that it will probably be three months before we get back to dark green shading the green line. If this ultimately turns out to be a market sentiment decline, which if we follow up today's move tomorrow with a similar like it doesn't have to be exact same numbers, but if we don't like immediately reverse a good chunk of today's drop tomorrow, then I think we are headed towards market sentiment decline. And I'm actually leaning that direction now with how we close today. We were doing OK until like the last 15, 30 minutes. And then we really puked at the close. And that kind of tilted me now towards uh, this is going to be, you know, more of a market sent more of a, you know, we'll be down for a little bit longer before we get back to dark green shading and green line. So what do you think? Do you agree with that? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments section below, especially if you disagree. What what indicators or charts are you looking at that would suggest you're a lot more bearish than that than I am? Like you might be expecting a death cross coming up or you're a lot more bullish than I am. Why, what's telling you that? Uh, share that with us in the in the comment section down below. Before we look at some other charts, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mouse over this icon here in the bottom right corner of your screen. Hit the red subscribe button that pops out. There's also one down below the video if you're watching us on YouTube. That notifies you when our videos are posted. Also, while you're down there, hit that thumbs up icon. That tells us you liked our video today and that you want us to do another video again tomorrow. Quick way to give us feedback if you like our stuff. If you don't like it, of course, you don't have to click on anything. You don't even have to watch. But if you do like it, it helps us tremendously when you, when you click those thumbs up icons. Also, comment down there. What did you get out of the video today? What stood out to you? Join our website at marketscholars.com. There's a link popping out up there in the top right corner of your screen. Click on that link to subscribe to our site for free. Follow me on Twitter for more content between the videos from day to day. There's my handle, at DavidSettle42. And join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. All right, if you're watching us on our blog here, check out some of these other things on the right. Here's our Market Outlook live video. I do these at 3.30 Eastern Time before the market closes. You click on this image. It takes you to this page. You can also get to it by clicking on Live Trade Review here in the Market Outlook menu. Um, here's where I, again, at 3.30 Eastern Time, I look at all the other trades we've done in, these, in the older Market Outlooks to see whether we should stay in them. We closed out a couple today. Um, we also put on today's trade already before the market closed. Um, so uh, check that out. That's where you can see that live. You can also see the, the archives of all the old ones here as well uh, on this page. Uh, if you come down here, you can see our upcoming classes. Click on View More. That takes you to our calendar. Uh, you can also hit uh, Trading Rooms here in our menu. That also takes you here. Here's our upcoming classes for December. Uh, all of our three, three, over three years worth now of, um, of archives posted there. Come down to the bottom. Click that heart. It opens up another new tab. Hit that Like button right there. Um, thumbs up icon right here on uh, this image that takes you to a new tab hit that like button again the more you do that the more people see our content that's why we always ask for the thumbs up it, it helps our content get out to a broader audience a wider audience uh, LinkedIn as well uh, the same thing you, you like it on LinkedIn it gets out to a broader audience it helps you because Twitter and Facebook promote content in your timelines from the accounts that you engage with the most we try to make it really easy for you to engage with us right here all right, now let's take a look at what's driving the price action. Of course, we all know it's that it's however you say it, the new variant <laughs> for the COVID-19 uh, that's out there. That's really causing a lot of havoc. But it kind of like what we talked about today, like, you know, th this so far, we don't even know if it's any worse than the Delta variant and the Delta variant, the market really shrugged it off. So I don't think necessarily it's the variant. I think it's I think this kind of shows here. Let me get to the comparison chart. This kind of shows what kind of market we're in in terms of how fragile it was. Um, we've been in this very bullish market, but valuations have gotten so bullish, it's been hard to sustain, right? And once you get a uh, pol monetary policy, it's not nearly as accommodative anymore. It's still very accommodative. Nothing's really changed. This, there's only been one round of tapering. But, but still not as accommodative. It's not expected to be as accommodative. It's expected to actually get more restrictive uh, with how high inflation is. Um, that's put a lot of pressure on a very fragile market because of how high the valuations are. It might This might ultimately blow out to be exactly like October 2014 where we had the tapering ended, we had the Ebola virus scare, things really hit the fan in a matter of a week or two, and then it was all about you know much to do about nothing. And this could very well be the case. The difference now, though, compared to 2014, is, October 14, is valuations are sky high now. 
Uh, so it again puts the market in a worse position than it did there um, because we just we can't you know as you can see it only it's been a couple of days where we just really don't have any information to how bad or not bad this variant is and you see how the market's reacting already um, again small cap stocks getting hammered down eight percent over this since including the starting on that Friday after after um, Thanksgiving almost ten percent drop in commodities look at real estate down five and a half percent. Uh, there's your S&P. Emerging markets actually holding up pretty well uh, lately. Uh, they had been down quite a bit, but now since uh, since that uh, drop on yesterday morning, we've actually kind of held up. Um, and then you can see long-term bonds up 4%. Gold's outperforming. Currencies are outperforming. Um, the dollar's been very strong. Let's take a look at the, Euro, uh, the dollar index here, which, remember, is mostly the euro. Uh, you can see the nice little rally it's had today because now it's shifted from kind of a safe, uh, a risk asset class to now, again, kind of taking on its safety functions. Um, you can also see two long-term bonds have been breaking out. Still not, you know, not parabolic, but still in a, bear, a strong bullish trend with some room to run. I think, you know, we've, we've talked about before, if we were going to really get bearish, you're going to get up to this 157 level. Um, and you know, all the way up to 163, you're still retracing, right? It's once you break 163, now we're not retracing anymore. I think we probably get up into this area, and then that's at the worst, you know. And, and the worst of the market sentiment decline is about as far as we get there. Um, and let's take a look at here. I wanted to show you uh, this chart. Um, let's see, here's the asset class grid. Here's all the different asset classes, and you can see there's a lot of dark pink shading and red lines. Look at all that. Dark pink shading. This is crude oil. Here's silver. Look at copper. Uh, this is global equities, which are now dark pink shading in a red line now that U.S. has really hit the fan. Uh, you can see developed markets have been bearish. Emerging markets actually held up pretty well today. They were actually up uh, today. Um, Bitcoin is holding up pretty well, uh, but it's still dark pink shading in a red line. Uh, you can see the euro has been in the bearish trend and has been kind of rallying during this weakness. It's been you know rallying up here. The ten-year yields in dark pink shading in a red line, and bonds in dark pink, dark green shading in the green line. And gold is also holding uh, strong. So we are obviously in risk-off mode here. Uh, interesting here on the sector chart, sector comparison chart. Um, if you look at, let's see here, is that the chart we want? Yeah, that's the chart we want. If you look at again, just that same um, time frame going back to the Friday of November, uh, you can see that. Um, here, let's go to ten minute. E energy, energy, industrials, financials. Um, you can see also uh, communication services are down there, just getting hammered. Technology has been holding up along with healthcare and utilities, but they're getting uh, beat up at the very end of the day today. Um, everything is down. Remember, when everything drops, that's when you know you're in intermediate decline mode, right? And when everything starts to drop down, if you take a look at the U the sector chart here, it ha that everything hasn't been dropping, but now look at all the dark pink shading and red lines: communication services, uh, industrials, financials, energy, materials, staples, dark pink shading and a red line, real estate, uh, light pink shading, um, and a, but close to 50. Utilities close to 50, light pink shading in the yellow line. Healthcare close to 50, light pink shading in the yellow line. Uh, discretionary, uh, not as close, but working its way towards 50 with light pink shading in the yellow line. So it's all like it, these two are lagging because they've been outperforming and it's been the safety trade, but everything is moving. Uh, again, another sign that this is more than just a hiccup, right? A little near term hiccup. It's going to be at least an intermediate decline, if not, you know, a longer, uh, deeper market sentiment decline. Which, remember, it's not the end of the world. It's actually a really, really good thing uh, to get those. So it's not, it's not, it's hardly by saying that we're. I expect a market sentiment decline. Hardly does that mean that I think that the world's going to end. And it's not apocalyptic. It's not doom and gloom. It's it's like saying that. Oh, if you take a deep breath in, and I expect that you're going to have a deeper exhale than normal, then I think you're going to die, right? That's hard. That's not what I'm saying. That's obviously not what we say. Um, and that's what a market sentiment decline is. We had a deep inhale, and when you have a deep inhale, you're going to have a deeper exhale than normal. That's, that's normal, right? That's, that doesn't mean we're dying. The market's not dying. It just means it's how you respond to 
deeper inhales where you breathe in deeper and longer and now you exhale right we had a little exhale here in september but it wasn't very much of one and now it's now we're kind of reaping that right we're reaping what we sowed why right? by not exhaling more uh, when we probably should have all right so our stock our trade idea of the day is on roblox it's been a popular uh, stock here lately since it went um public earlier this year you can see it had a real significant breakout on its earnings here right lately kind of went parabolic then you got that engulfing pattern you had this kind of last little dead cat bounce in the opposite direction um, it's up to this high point that didn't quite get bullish on the near-term line and then now we started to roll over and we've really kind of broken down on the uh, three green arrow chart you can see we have broken below the eight we've we're flirting with the 17 the mat which means you know again bearish divergence uh that macd is well below its moving average stochastics has already been dropping volumes really picking up not surprisingly um the what what good strong moves we had are no longer there so you're below 60 now you're below um crossing below zero uh if you look at the um dmi uh, chart here you were so strongly bullish above 30 below 20 we're now we're you know we we're actually we're flirting with that 30 and 20 level earlier uh, we're getting less uh, bullish from that perspective really moving in the opposite direction um, if you look at the bollinger bands we have been easily in the upper quartile now we're right back to the middle um, so it doesn't necessarily there's not very much volume uh, in this space so it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to tank here but i also think that we've set the high point uh, and with some good uh, resistance up in that area which uh, for me, what that tells me is to look at selling a um, bear call spread. So we'll sell the 130, the mid 30 deltas, sell the 130, buy the 135. Uh, depending upon where you get filled in at, we got in, we got around 125 to 145, uh, a little bit wider spread. Uh, so we're in, we're up a little bit since we got into that, uh, going for about 395 return. So over easily over 30% return as long as we stay below where that break even is, which you can see on the chart. That break even is these old highs right so as long as we stay below those old highs uh we don't have to even extend that much lower we just have to stay down and i think at the worst case scenario i think that we have gone parabolic and now we'll just consolidate um and and at, at best kind of stay sideways and if we do rally that's the range i think we can rally into um and still be fine with this type of trade that's why Hence, that's why I did that kind of a trade rather than like a long put where I would need it to keep going down uh, to make money on it. And the other thing about bear call spreads is if it works, it's going to work really quickly. Bear calls lose their value very quickly. So so you can gain, if, if we get to 50% of max gain quickly before 20 days expiration, we'll take it. We'll take it as soon as we get it and, and use this capital somewhere else, right? Um, so that's the difference typically with bear calls versus bull puts. Bull puts take longer. Um, because puts hold their value better calls don't so this might be a trade that we might be in and out of here relatively if it does extend to the downside we might get out of it relatively quickly so that's a consideration uh, as we watch this trade over the next week or two all right so that does it for today you've heard from me now i want to hear from you use that link that's popping out in the top right corner of your screen that takes you to our market outlook forums open up any new thread there with any questions or comments you have reply to anybody else's threads let's keep this conversation going in between videos as always, thank you very much uh, for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as our website at marketscholars.com. Click that thumbs up icon, like us on Twitter and Facebook. And as I said, it really helps us out a lot. And then comment on the video. Have a great rest of your Wednesday night, everybody, and we'll see you all next time.